Hello everyone, welcome back to Silas Pro Cats, or welcome to Silas Pro Cats, and welcome to Pride Month. Let's go! <laughs> So I am a very big fan of telling people that you can and should read queer books, you know, at just about any given time, and you don't necessarily need a month to tell you to do that. However, I am also the queen at using certain things as excuses to finally get to some books of my TBR that I have been lugging around with me for a while, and so this is exactly what's going to happen this month, because this video is going to be me telling you all about the options I am giving myself to read during Pride Month. And so I have gone around and gathered all of the books I could find that are queer, have queer authors, have some queer themes, that I would like to try and get to in the month of June. Almost every single one of these books is from my physical TBR, and almost every single one of them also, as well, in addition to that, is from the list of books I have counted somewhere in March of the, listen, it's fine, 204 unread books I have on my shelves at this time. Um, my goal is to get that down to about 100 at the end of this year, and so far I think I have read and or unhauled 32. So you know what? We're doing pretty good. So I'm actually pretty proud to see that a lot of the books are from that pile specifically. Or from the pile of books that I've purchased since then. Let's not talk about that too much. But without further ado, these are the books that I want to try and read during the month of June. So I think it's fair to say that I can... I have two big piles here, let's just say it like this. So pile number one is standalones. <laughs> Wouldn't you believe it? Standalones of books that I want to be trying this month. Um, the first one of these is The Garden Party or Other Stories by Catherine Mansfield. The stories themselves might not be explicitly queer, however Catherine Mansfield very likely was because a lot of her stories, as well as a lot of her letters, etc, etc, speak of a very profound love that she had for women. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, it's not entirely sure what sexuality she might have had but were she to be alive right now because Catherine Mansfield is no longer with us because The Garden Party, for instance, was published... let's... let's find that out real quick... Uh, in 1922. So, you know, it has been a little while. Um, I've had this beautiful edition for a little while now, I really really love it, and I'm honestly super excited to get to this, especially because we do love a little short story every now and then. This collection has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, on a total of 182 pages, so they're going to be pretty short, they're going to be pretty neat, and I'm honestly very excited to read another classic, finally even though it's a baby one, but you know. Another one, and this is actually a new purchase, sorry, is Affinity by Sarah Waters. I've heard a lot of great things of, uh, about Sarah Waters. I read a book specifically about women writing gothic fiction, horror fiction, etc, etc, and her name came up in that as well. And I've, you know, I've always wanted an excuse to read another female author. So I picked up Affinity because, I don't know, it sounded interesting to me. So this is another standalone that I would like to get to. It has a little bit more than 350 pages, so not too big either. And I kind of really, I, I kind of really vibe with the cover, you know, it's so, it's so simple. It's so, it's so sweet and simple. Now, I could try and give you a summary, however I have forgotten. <laughs> what the book is about. So, yay! We're gonna read this one. Moving on! <laughs> we actually have another short story collection. This one I found at a used bookstore at some point, and it is called Men on Men! Best New Gay Fiction. This is volume 7, with an introduction by David Bergman. It was published in 1998, which is actually when I was born. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that neat? And it's a collection of stories written by gay men about gay men. Um, I think this one specifically is also... 
Yes. So this one says, you'll find provocative spins on the trials of coming out, familiar rejection, the relationship between gay men and lesbians, and the aftershock of AIDS. Bracing new perspectives on upper class obsession, working class love, and life among the demi monde of petty thieves and prostitutes, and unabashedly erotic tales that explore the phenomenology of sex, from the updating of Greek tradition to what is what it means to be young, queer, and suburban. So this is going to be talking a lot probably about the AIDS crisis, because, you know, 1998, that was still pretty fresh then, wasn't it? Um, I am very excited to get into this though, it, I'm, I have been meaning to get to it for a while now, so June is my excuse. Please, dear reading gods, <laughs> let me get to this one, thank you. And last but not least for the standalone situation that we have, we have this one, which is actually one that I have borrowed from a friend, and that is Master of Poisons by Andrea Haston. I got this from Sarah. And I started reading it last year, and then it used up 50,000 of my brain cells, and I did not continue reading it, because it, it was very complex in a way I did not fully anticipate at the time. And then I was very swamped with other things, and then I just completely forgot about it. It wasn't that I hated it, I was just unable to invest myself into it as much as I wanted to. So we're giving it another go. So I can read it and give it back to Sarah at some point. <laughs> I do love how how pretty the cover is. Like, look at that. It's just so nice and warm. It looks like honey. I love it. Right. So the next, or well, the only other category I've left really is like continuations of series. Um, but I think I'm going to split this up again, and I'm going to say I'm going to do continuations of series, and then we're going to talk about Danme, which is a whole other category. So with continuations of series, I have three fantasy series. The first one is Namas Blessing by Jacqueline Carey. This is the last book in the third and, as far as I know, last Nam Nama, not Nama, Kushiel trilogy set in Jacqueline Carey's alternative France magical something something universe. Um, <laughs> I've been loving every single one of her works, and even though I do have to say that every single main pairing is male-female um, in all three trilogies. There are so many queer themes to be explored in her worlds and with her characters, and especially with Moiren, who is the main character of the Nama series, um, because she is incredibly openly, I would say, if, if we were to class her with current terms pansexual. Um, and she does not make a secret out of this, because in her society, um, sex and the desire to have sex is actually almost sacred. And so she is almost encouraged to, you know, do whatever she wants to do, as long as her partners are willing to do the same thing, basically. And so same-sex relationships are basically the, uh, treated more or less as the exact same thing as... Um, a male-female relationship, for example, which I personally found incredibly refreshing, especially considering the first Kushiel book came out in the early 2000s, I believe. Not entirely sure on the like exact date, but I think somewhere around those lines. Um, so I'm really excited to read this. This is going to be the last book, and I'm going to be sad because I love Moren so much. She is my baby. <laughs> I love all of I love the other two protagonists of the books, um, Imriel and Phaedra of the first one, obviously. I love them very much, but Moiran has a special place in my heart, okay? I love her I love her attitude so much. She's such a she's such a sweet girl with such a mischievous touch, and I'm just I love her. So I'm really excited to get to this. It looks very thick, that's because it is. <laughs> it's almost seven hundred pages, but Jacqueline Carey books go super fast when you start reading them, so I actually don't think I'll be spending a lot of time with this, to be quite honest. Another one is one that I have had on my shelves unfinished for so, for so long. I reread the first book, even that has been a while, but I refuse to pick it up again simply because I personally think I can do this now, I don't need to be reminded, and that is the Girls of Paper and Fire trilogy by Natasha Nang. This is book two and this is book three. Yes. 
they are vastly different in size, and it is bothering me because this is the only big one I have. Um, but Girls of Storm and Shadow is going to be a reread for me, whereas uh, Girls of Fate and Fury, which is the last book in the trilogy, is going to be new for me, so that's another take off the TBR. Um, and this series is basically about this world where there's three main castes. Um, I think it's Moon, Stone, and Paper? I'm not too sure about the second one in between. <laughs> um, but basically, Paper Cased are those who are fully human, Moon Cased are those who are fully demon, that's kind of the wrong word, but it's the only one that comes to mind right now, and Stone, if that's what they're called, are the ones in between who exhibit both traits almost equally, essentially. And the first book is all about this Moon Cased emperor who takes paper girls as his concubines, essentially. And our main character, Lei, obviously gets dragged into this, which is partially because she has really beautiful golden eyes that should allow her to be part of the stone case, but she's not. She is just a normal paper girl. And um, the series very frankly talks about very heavy topics like sexual abuse, for example, and I do very much still love the first book. I don't remember a lot about the second, and alas, I have yet to pick up book three. Just to embarrass myself a little bit further, this book has been out since 2021. I got it when it came out. I rest my case. I am going to finish this trilogy this month, if it's the last goddamn thing I do. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure it'll work out. I'm sure, I'm sure everything will be just fine. And the last series I do want to continue on with is the Nightrunner series by Lynn Favelling. This is book three to five. I have read the first two. Um, do I remember a whole lot about them? No, but I figured I'm just gonna jump into book three and we see what happens. If I can keep going with this, great, then I'll just keep going with it. If I get so incredibly confused that I keep having to, to, to try and remember very desperately what exactly is going on with no understanding of the situation and no emotional investment, I will do the smart thing and start rereading books one and two. <laughs> the only thing I do remember from the series is um, it is about an assassin and his name is Alec. And Alec in the first book gets introduced to Seregiel, who is a master assassin already, essentially. And he takes Alec under his wing, he starts teaching him the ways, and they eventually also fall in love. That's a tiny little spoiler, but if you read the first book, the chemistry is already off the charts. And then book two happened. That, that, that I do remember. <laughs> I also remember the angst of book two. That was a whole other thing. But yes, I would like to get to these three, um, simply because I remember having a pretty good time with the first two. And that's also three more books off my TBR. So that would be nice. And last but certainly not least in the categories, as I said, we have the Danmei category. Now for anyone who doesn't know, Danmei is the... Chinese word for boys love, which means any and all kind of genres and books, etc. This can also go further, go to movies, to series, to what have you. Danmei is the word for Chinese stories about men loving other men. That's really all it is. It is as much a genre description as queer literature might be in the West, for example. However, Danmei is specifically reserved for men. Um, I do believe the female term is baiha. I could be wrong, though. Now, <laughs> I have a few Danmei novels, and <laughs> one of them is The Scum Villain Safe Saving System by Mo Sheng Tongshu. Now, I have technically read this already, because I read it online when it was first released as a web novel. However, that was with a very inferior translation, let's just say it like that. These are the very, very pretty editions that also have pictures. D -d -d -d. Pictures! <laughs> Which I love! Um, the third volume is the continuation and, I do believe, subsequent end of the story. The fourth one is just a bunch of short, short stories of things that happen in between, which we love. We love extra content. So these two are, well, why they are technically rereads, I have counted them as first physical reads. At least this one and this one I've 
got after I counted the 204. Let's not worry about that. Uh, simply because I have technically never read these the way that they are in here. So I'm really, really excited for them. And the other two that I have are two volumes of a new series that I actually haven't read yet, which is these two, The Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Now, I know that it's going to be sad, like very sad. I, I know like a few scenes that people keep talking about. I don't know what context they happen in. I don't know what's going on there. I think the two main characters take turns dying and then they get reincarnated or so something happens there. That's all I know. I am pretty much going into these entirely blind except for the things that I've happened to catch on to on Twitter. So whatever happens, happens, I guess. These are a bit heftier than Scum Villain. Um, like, for example, the first one is almost 500 pages, which, at least for the Danmei that I currently have, is the longest. And they feel bigger <laughs> than these ones. So, you know, it might take a little bit longer than the others. But I'm really excited to get into these. They look so insanely pretty. I don't know if I can show this on camera without the light acting up, but they are so pretty. I, I'm so excited to get into them simply because of that. I'm trying to find some art and obviously it's hiding itself from me right now. Oh, never mind. Hold up. Oh, hey, cool. Look, there's angst already. I don't know who this person is, but he's having a time. So, <laughs> yes, these four are my Don May picks. Um, Three of which will count for the books that I've gotten after counting my TBR, one of which will count for the TBR books that I've counted. So honestly, overall, we're doing pretty good. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 books that I would love to get to in June. Now there's probably a bunch of um, ebooks I have that are also queer. I do also have, I think, like, three arcs left, which I think are all queer. So, you know, um, I'm gonna read more than these, <laughs> but these are the physical books I could find in my room right now, of which I knew there was something queer going on, either with the author, with the themes discussed in the books, or with the characters themselves. Because at the end of the day, I personally think, at least for me, it's kind of important to make distinctions when it comes to queer books, simply because, um, I think you cannot simply just define a queer book by how queer the main character is, for example. Because especially in older fiction that was written at a time where we didn't have the terminologies we have right now, there's a lot of themes to be discussed and that were discussed in a very different context in a very different manner than we would do right now. A lot of people call this queer subtext or context, for example. Um, a lot of these context clues can also be very confusing for us nowadays because we don't understand them as the context clues that they are. Um, there's this whole deal of being careful when to ascribe queerness to a historical figure such as an author, for example, because sometimes you have very obvious context clues, like for example letters that they've written, <coughs> Catherine Mansfield, um, convictions that have been leveled against them, <coughs> Oscar Wilde, but sometimes you can never be fully sure. And I personally think it's really important to expand your horizon of queer literature beyond the very obvious, well, you know, there's two women and they're kissing, there's two men and they're holding hands, or whichever one have you. Just because you might be missing out on some really interesting, almost think pieces of literature if you keep your focus that narrow. Now, of course, you can read whatever you want, you know. Um, I'm also going to be putting out some recommendation videos for people who haven't really gotten into queer literature, with the explicit caveat that queer literature itself is a very loaded term that doesn't really make that much sense overall, simply because it's not a genre really, if you think about it, which I think is something that some people get confused about every once in a while when they're looking for, like, queer recommendations, because 
it's not necessarily enough to say I want queer books because the question after that is, okay, so what exactly are we looking for? Because right now at the moment we have such a blossoming market when it comes to queer literature, quote-unquote, when it comes to queer authors being represented in the publishing market, and we're nowhere near perfect there. We absolutely aren't, and we're also making a lot of steps in the wrong direction again, especially when it comes to book bans, when it comes to people being incredibly upset either because there's queer people or because the queer people don't have the same lived experiences as they do, and such it is deemed as bad representation, which is a whole other can of worms we're not going to get into right now. <laughs> but you know, I'm going to be making some videos in some specific genre categories about queer books throughout the month, that's a very big plan that I have, and I'm going to be trying to update you on these books that I'm reading as well, just because, you know, why not? But with that being said, I hope that you are able to enjoy Pride in whichever way you want to, if you want to enjoy it, that is. I kind of do hope that you do. Um, Drop in the comments down below if you have any queer books that you specifically wanted to read in June and have been looking forward to this entire year so far. Or tell me in the comments down below if you have any favourite queer books um, that you might want me to talk about at some point or that you might want to recommend to me in case I haven't heard of them yet. And I, I will not be mad if you tell me about queer books that I have already read because chances are I probably liked them and I like talking about things I enjoy. So feel free to drop all of that in the comments down below. As always I hope that you have a nice reading experience yourself, in this case a very queer one perhaps, and that you continue having a nice reading experience. And I will see you guys soon!